So today's Bible word I'd like to share with you is Genesis chapter 22, verses 9 to 11. I'll read them for you. Do not lay your hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up, and there in the thicket he saw a ram caught by its horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. This is the word of God. To begin with, I would like to ask you one thing. It is simple and easy to answer. Do you have a hobby? You can ask me the same question. Do you have a hobby? I say, yes, I have one. Swimming is my hobby. To say why swimming? I need to go back to 1999. As you know, all South Korean men have to serve in Korean Army, Korean Air Force, or Korean Navy for at least a couple of years, I mean back then. They can choose one. If they don't choose, automatically they are enlisted in Korean Army. I chose Korean Navy by mistake. One day, a friend of mine asked me to go with him to apply for Korean Navy. I'm so scared, he said. So I went with him to support him. But at an induction center, he asked me, can you write an application for with me? I'm so scared, he said once again. I think I was a good friend. I wrote my application form with him. We had a very brief interview with an enlisting officer, and three months later, I went to basic training camp with my friend. It was a seven-week boot camp, definitely. It was a hard and touch. But for me, the last week was the most horrible training. Naval soldiers live on battleships, as you can imagine. In case of emergency, we are supposed to, to take off from our houses. That was why the last, train, last week training focused on how to swim in chaotic situations. In a chaotic situation, let us imagine that your ship is hit by a torpedo and begins to, to sink. What option can you take to, to survive? Nothing. Except for driving, I'm sorry, except for diving into the water and swim away from the sinking ship as fast as you can. So the swimming training was not designed to teach us how to swim. Instead, it was designed to force us to dive into the water in chaotic situations. What was worse? We were sent to Navy SEAL Special Training Camp for a week. The beginning part of the first day went smoothly. Drill instructors made us do various military gymnastics for warms up. But right after that moment, they revealed who they were, really. All of a sudden, they forced us to dive into the water. Those who knew how to swim, dived into the water first. Those who did not know how to swim yet, felt a little bit comfortable with the water, dived second. Those who did not know how to swim and feel the water could not even put their feet into the water. Unfortunately, I belonged to the third group. 
Soon, instructors kicked my friends and me into the water. There, the swim training really began. Can you imagine what could happen when people who do not know how to swim are pushed into the 15 feet deep water? Hell was not in the sky, nor down there. Hell was what I had to go through for those seven days. As soon as my body hit the water, instinctively, I grabbed someone near me. At the same time, I felt that someone grabbed my shoulders, someone pulled my right foot, someone hung on my waist. For eight hours each day, I kept making a vow over and over again. I will learn how to swim as soon as I'm retired. I kept my promise. When I went back to college, I began taking swim lessons at an indoor swimming pool three times a week and practicing swimming three times a week. Because the lessons began at 6 a.m., I had to wake up at 5 a.m. I didn't stop. I mean, I couldn't stop because I knew that I had to overcome my trauma caused by swim. Seriously and consistently, I attended the lessons. At the time, I lived in a mega church run dorm for college students in Seoul. One day, I had a chance to talk with the superintendent and pastor there. At the end of our conversation, he gently suggested me to join his early morning service. I told him, Pastor, I think I prayed at the time. Where? I don't think I saw you in the sanctuary. Do you pray alone? He asked. No, I'm not alone. About 50 people with me. I answered, What do you do with that? Where? He asked me again. After a pause, I answered, I swim with them for 6 a.m. to 7.30 a.m. almost every day. And he nodded silently. I don't know what he actually meant by that. Until the, break, uh, until the break out of the COVID-19, since 2002, I swam at least twice a week. When I say that, some people ask me if I'm addicted to swim. Then I say, I think once I was, but I'm not addicted now. Instead, I just love swim. Usually they ask again, why? Then I say, swimming teach me a very important thing about life. I was born as a Methodist, and most of my friends are Methodist plus pastors or ministers. My parents are also Methodist. My two older sisters are also Methodist. So my joining a swim club in 2002 was the first time I belonged to a circle outside the church and did something with them for years. That experience led me to a great realization. As I said, I swam with those 15 people at least three times a week. They were from different walks of life with different expertise, but they were serious about what we are doing and about their lives. They were really concerned about how to make a good life. They continually whipped themselves to come to the swimming pool in time and improve their swim skills. No matter what, when there was a lesson, they showed up and dived into the water. To them, swimming was not something to kill their boredom and fatigue. To them, swimming was what helped them control their mind and body. 
at this juncture, I would like to ask the same question once again. Do you have a hobby? By hobby, I don't mean something you can use to kill boredom and fatigue. By hobby, I mean something you take seriously and attentively because it's going to help you control your mind and body. One essential requirement for having this kind of hobby is dedication or in the religious language, sacrifice. When I reflect on the life of Abram, I'm pretty sure that he took his life, I mean, he took his faith in God as a hobby. When he suffered from boredom and meaninglessness, anticipating the imminently coming of death at the age of 75, he found a new hobby. That was his spiritual journey with, with the God. Last week, we discussed about a crisis Abram suddenly faced. Yes, he became more famous. He became wealthier. He became a father. Nonetheless, when he attained what he desired for long, he forgot who he was. To pass over what he possessed to Isaac only, he kicked Hagar and Ishmael out of his house. At the very moment, God came to test him, commanding him to sacrifice Isaac. Abram obeyed God, and he went on a new journey to sacrifice his only son. When he was ready to kill Isaac, an angel of God shouted from the heaven, Do not lay a hand on the boy. God's angel said, Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God, because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. After that experience, Abram made another altar there and called it Jehovah Ireh. Jehovah Ireh means the Lord will provide. Only after that experience did Abram realize that God will provide him with what he needs in the future. Today, I'd like to say that religion, our faith in God, should be our hobby. Not a hobby you used to kill, boredom and fatigue, but a serious hobby to help us to control our mind and body. What is at stake here is that to experience how our faith in God helps us, we need to be ready to sacrifice we held on to consistently. When Abram gave up what he held on to for his future, God provided him with what he needed and made him convinced that God will do it again in the future. When we learn how to swim, we consistently have to move our body for breathing, strokes, and kicks. When we learn how to believe in God, by contrast, we patiently have to give up what we are holding on to for a sense of temporal comfort and safety. So if you seriously want to experience God's providingness, why don't you dive into your faith in God and begin to learn how to swim faithfully? Shall we pray now? Providing God, thank you for guiding us for the last week. Today we came to you to measure where we are on our journey of faith in you. 
You are here to dedicate what to focus on for this coming week. Like Abraham's journey of faith in you, we hope our faith in you is the strong foundation of our life. When we are shaken by our unquenchable desire, help us remember that when we give up what we are holding on to from fear and anxiety, you will provide. We pray in your name, Jesus the Christ. Amen.